Hello everyone. A warm welcome to join the CISU Talks. Today we are joined by Snehalata Deshmukh, HR Country Head at Nimble Group India. Hello Snehalata, welcome to our program. Good evening Vijay. With me I have uh, Prem Kumar. Hello Prem sir. Hi uh, Vijay. Hi Sneha. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening sir. And good evening to everyone who joined the call. Thank you for joining us, Nikolata. Uh, today we are going to talk on uh, empowering HR leadership, navigating the future of work. So, first question to you, Nikolata, uh, could you please share your career journey? Sure, Vizre. And first of all, thank you very much for providing me this platform. And you know, uh, I'm happy to share my journey. So, I started my uh, career as a zoology graduate. And what I always say, from animal to human, then I did my master's in human resource. Adding to that, uh, I did my diploma in labor law and I'm a 16 PF certified practitioner, which gives me uh, advantage and the leverage to understand the strength and the weakness of the people. My journey started as a placement recruiter and uh, the same consultant, they placed me with Naval Group India for the recruitment. But looking at the profile, my job, they hired me and I'm with the Naval Group India from last 15 years. I started as HR executive and today I'm head HR of the same organization. So that's my journey in brief. Thank you for that, Sneglata. Uh, it's a long journey with the same organization. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. So my first question is, what skills and qualities or crucial for a successful HR department in the modern workplace? So with my experience, uh, there are three important qualities um, HR department or a person working in HR department should possess. First, very important is the collaborative skill. Because we, uh, the HR, we are the bridge between management and the employee. And not just management and employee, but also interdepartment, intra-department. So this collaborative skills help us to build a bridge for the organizational success. Second, data analytics, because we have the most sensitive data and the wide range of data, that's people's data. The moment we are able to analyze this data in the right direction, there are so many decisions which would help organization to grow as well as for the people to grow. And third important, the mindset of a business partner and not just an individual HR department, like HRBP, what we say, you know, because that will help any HR person to think strategically whenever they are developing any policy, executing any policy, all the time, the strategic thought process of being a business partner, if it's in the mind, every HR function will help for the to the organization and to the employee as well. So these are the three skills I feel are very, very important collaboration, data analytics and business partner strategic thinking. Great. So you said uh, collaborative skills, which is the bridging for inter and intra departments and yes. data analytics. Definitely, there are lots of data you have to handle. Uh, mindset on business partner. So business partner means you would like to mention about business operations uh, within the organization and externally as well. So basically, the first, of course, the customer for any HR department is the employee and the internal stakeholders like the management. Okay. So when I say business partner, and every time the thinking process of HR, like how this particular policy, what I'm developing is going to help the organization to grow. So it can be in terms of, you know, generating revenue, or it also can be in terms of cost saving, keeping in mind the welfare of the employees. Okay. Hmm. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Sneha, for that. Uh, Sneha, uh, thank you mm -hmm. for joining us. You are the first woman leader who we've been having in the show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, being part of this uh, talk show that we are doing. 
my next question would be how does the hr director role intersect with the uh, c-suit executives a very interesting question uh, prem kumar because uh, being into hr you are the focal point the hr is the focal point for the growth and the success of the organization because it connects management employee departmental operations so as a hr director the role which uh, you know there i mean with various head the c suite executive it intersects may it be cfo taking some financial decision as i said always keeping the wellness and the prioritizing employee cto the chief technical officer working on the competencies of the employee taking care of the career of the employee then we have a cio chief information officer because in today's world with the technology there are so many things so many software we are building in in house and so many things can be done to increase the productivity so with this kind of intersection the collaborative skill as i mentioned earlier helps a lot this i would like to say yeah thank you for that uh, sneha Uh, Vijay, you would like to go for the next question? Yes, Asmega. So, uh, as we know that everybody uh, talks about AI nowadays, right? So, how are mm-hmm. technology and artificial intelligence transforming HR practices from recruitment to performance management? Absolutely, uh, Vijay. Nowadays, everywhere the buzzword is AI, 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 and I am. also equally you know the fan of this generative ai i must say uh, ai uh, helps uh, you know hr in transforming the practices like for example it can automate lot of process which are redundant which are unproductive in nature or which are just you know a kind of a data entry type of job the time and energy which hr department earlier was uh, giving for such job a simple example i would say uh, for example say recruitment process so there are number of cvs you know when uh, we get so even as a person when a person is scanning he or she takes a minimum say, you know a quick scan okay this is matching this is matching there is a checklist in the mind the same work when this ats system is doing for the hr because it scans you just have to set the prompt there like these are the checklist what we need and it helps to filter the resume at the first level so the second level where the hr can you know check the resume it's much more less workload and the same resources can be used to in more strategic planning strategic uh, policy making and the execution of such policies and hr then can focus more on the well being of the employees for example uh, employee engagement so like through ai this uh, employee engagement it gets a boost because you know it identifies the patterns and it can address the issues also what i was talking about data analytics so when we have fed you know this all the data in the system it's important that it's not just data but what you derive from the data that is important because all your decisions are based on it and ai definitely helps in saving time and having some scenario in front to take the decision faster and quicker so that's how the ai helps in transforming hr practices vijay okay when uh, we talk about ai another question spinning in mind hmm. while you uh, recruiting right so you mean to say in profile uh, that should be important keywords uh, by that keywords uh, or this uh, ai technology you are utilizing and uh, shortlisting the resources I mean, profile. Yes, at the initial level, the keywords are the main matching uh, one of the matching criteria. I would say because there are loads and loads of you know resumes coming at the HR desk at the HR executive level, mm-hmm. and the poor per- I mean that person definitely is not going to read each and every resume because it will take ages for him or her to read it out. So the very you know fastest way is to filter it out with the keyword matching. so that saves time for that person and when that first a uh, level of screening happens after that whatever lot we get then there the manual reading comes into the play 
All right. In that case, uh, uh, losing a right candidate candidate also possible, right? I mean to say the right skill, the person also. Um, if it's only the keyword uh, checklist, if we are putting only that one criteria should be matched, mm -hmm. then yes, there are chances that we might lose some person just because the words were not matching. But 90% of our experience says, because today uh, everyone, you know, is well aware about the uh, words or the jargons we are using in our day to day profile. So yes, 90% still uh, it's a success rate. 10% I have to say yes, there are chances. Absolutely. Thank you for that insight, uh, Sneha. Mm -hmm. Now, we're moving to the next question. See, uh, now with the tools coming in, uh, you have the ATS uh, helping you to shortlist resumes. Then you have the interview process, which is also getting uh, streamlined when you are looking at uh, AI as a tool. There are a lot of tools which are coming up. You were talking in your previous question is what tools you would get into the CIO and the C suit uh, connect between how you your role can intersect with the C suit, right? Mm -hmm. I think when you look at the tools, you will have to carefully analyze what tools can help us reduce the work. That's what you are trying to say, right? Uh, right, 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 Prem Kumar. Okay. So with that, what are the ethical considerations surrounding the use of AI and HR decision making? You touched upon to a little bit in the previous question, but how does the decision making affect while we are not using AI and how while we are using AI? That one clarity you would like to have. Okay. So I'll answer your uh, this question like how decision making changes with AI, without AI, right? Yeah. So, uh, one minute, first, uh, so yeah. Yeah, if anybody in the audience have a question, you raise your hands, we will allow you to ask Neha to uh, answer your questions. Let's, let's make this interactive if that is possible. Uh, Sneha, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Sneha. Okay. So, um, decision making with AI, first thing I would like to say, it saves time. Because with AI, the generation of the report from the data, okay. okay, it is in the fraction or second of, you know, time. Whereas if I put a resource there, a full time FTE mm -hmm. to uh, extract the report from the data given, it might take a day. Okay. Plus, uh, the resource, of course, can come up with a lot of scenarios. But again, it would be limited considering the experience and the exposure of that resource. Whereas with the AI, the report, I will get the report in five minutes and I'll get, I would say maximum of scenarios for a, for a management to take a decision. They want scenarios or options in front of them where they can only choose and pick up. Okay. We go with this. We don't go with this. They don't have time to actually, you know, put uh, behind the kind of uh, analyzing, okay, this, that or that. They just need, okay, tell me what we should, option A, option B. Okay. This is what the management look forward to. So with AI, I feel the time is saved. Hmm. So the decision make, uh, making is faster. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, without AI, the same decision will take, you know, three days, four days or even a month. Because the right kind of report or right kind of scenario has not reached to the management mm. in that time. Okay. This is my takeaway. With AI, it's quicker. And since the decision is taken, the once the decision is taken, the major role has done, the execution, you know, follows automatically. Okay. And as you know, Prem Kumar, many a time it is important, the timely decision. Yeah, right. For a for an organization to run and to have a success, it's a timely decision. Right, wrong comes later on, but take a decision. And management will feel confident to take a decision when they have the scenario in front of them with the data. So that's my take on this. Yeah. So you touched upon pointers where we say AI gives you quicker uh, reports. Hmm. You have better uh, control over the scenarios that you have defined to take right decisions with the tool based on the criteria that you have defined in the tool. 
which gives you more visibility the reports are available instantly rather than having it generated as and when required uh, by the fte and it takes a uh, lot of time that's mm-hmm. where we see uh, ai helping you making the decisions quicker that's the take away right in this uh, right point. yeah right okay thank you for that mm-hmm. hello ashish uh, we have ashish here yeah. Uh, yeah hi a very good evening to everyone good evening sneha good evening ashish yeah thank you so much it's been uh, pretty informative uh, listening to you uh, i just uh, had a um, uh, clarification want to ask want to seek your views that uh, does ai makes better decisions than human because my personal understanding is yes because you know they actually are able to outperform the human tasks and because it needs a lot of which which by a lot of data processing pattern recognition etc but i want to understand your views let like, uh, how ai makes better decisions than humans can they do it and secondly can ai replace human decision making altogether okay that's a very interesting question ashish and that i think very close to me you know i i like uh, this kind of uh, question important is ai will never take any decision for me it's ai will only give you data will only give you scenarios but as a human we have the strength and we have the competency to take the decision not just based on one part that is data but there is a emotional touch there is a human touch because we are human after all and that's this what that will make you know human any time better than the ai ai will not replace human but it will be replaced by the human who knows how to use the ai i say that way yeah completely second your thoughts we all know i mean on uh, november 8 the incident in south korea right where you know robot actually mistook a human and exactly chopped him off, really exactly in oh. fact uh, to add it more there was this one movie i robo if uh, i don't know if you would have seen it uh, will smith was in that and he was stuck in the car in you know the water okay inside the water he was drowned in the river and in the car he was there and his daughter 6 years old daughter was there okay they were stuck in the car with all water you know uh, flooding up in the car and a robo i mean the ai that time i mean it comes and the task for that per robot is to rescue this two people okay but the only condition that only one person could be rescued so what this robot does he checks the uh, probability of surviving where the father's uh, probability is more because you know he uh, he could rescue him he was in the front seat and he doesn't go to help the daughter whereas will smith he is being shouting that i'm capable of coming out you just take care of my daughter because she is the one who will need the support you know but as a robot it doesn't understand that part that human touch or that you know emotions no nothing so what i always say ai can only give you data in a quick time but the decision that the human touch can only come from human ai cannot do that absolutely and i and i strongly believe that because the kind of brain we have the kind of emotions we have everything it changes our decision making is based on our gut feeling and that gut feeling sometimes it's not possible to explain but it does help you to take the right decision So, actually i completely second your thoughts you know because we bring as a lot of range of experiences creativity intuition you know exactly. to the decision making process which ai absolutely. really really cannot actually absolutely absolutely it's it's ai is a machine it will give me all sort of data scenario okay this is there this is there but it is like you know i have to decide whether i go for option a or option b and does it feel good does it feel good in my gut like why am i doing this absolutely so, yeah. to add to what sneha said and what you that you are having see I have been in AI for three years, AI and ML. So, what I understand or what I have gone through with AI is, it is predominantly the data that you load. It does not have a fresh data. We are still not gone into a system where it automatically learns from, but the data is fed, uh, unstructured and structured data is fed to the system so that it picks up the right uh, configuration that we are putting to the system. But at the end of the day, the validation still remains with human to just to add yes. to what we are saying so the decision making and the process that you want to set on an ai tool is based on the scenarios that a human has to take 
and that is how it is enabling us to do quicker things and it can run as many as scenarios that you want to define i will add it like that and take it for you if that answers your question ashish no no definitely yes a big thanks to sneha and big thanks to you as well so i definitely answers my question and you know it throws out a light on a lawn a larger area that you know yeah. uh, i cannot replace humans at all humans will be required the kind of tools and technologies will change and we need to upgrade you know to leverage to add uh, again see when the banks went for the atms i this i've speaking uh, on many discussions that i've okay. been part of banks when they brought atms they said bank employees would not lose their jobs and stuff but bank employees increased over the years similarly when google started to say search engine so search engine said oh there now we don't need anybody books to give or some references we just google go to google search and you will get the result now we have a data of google but we don't know what to search that's the stage we are into and we don't get we get hundreds of answers but we don't know what is the answer that we'll have to look at so it is all a scenario that we went in and one scenario led to another enhancement and another scenario went to another enhancement that's how the whole ai piece has been evolved for last i think 30 40 years we we been talking ai in a gradual way but it's catching up pace in the last 5 6 years right so absolutely then absolutely i completely agree thank you so much for your input sir thank you so much uh we have arvind arvind your question please yeah uh, good evening sneha and good evening panelists it's a good morning for me here in the usa uh i just would i would like to add some points regarding the ai selection and throw some light on uh, recently what are the challenges we are seeing uh, in uh, my organization when we are doing the bulk hiring Okay. Um, six months before, we were not getting more resume which were matching the keyword for the profile. But recently, we are seeing when we are giving those keyword and lot of profile we are getting, okay. and then we notice that through AI and the uh, current uh, the job applicants are adding some of the keywords which makes um, more added more possibility for their resume to be selected. Hmm. and when we are taking the interviews we are seeing that they are not at all performing so it has increases the work also for interviewer who are interviewing and sometimes we are getting challenge hey are we selecting the right candidate looks like his resume and whatever his resume and he's saying is looks passionate it's a quick pick uh, for his resume and take the decision ki these 20 candidates will call however out of 20 uh, even a one is not good enough so AI is also increasing our work sometimes if we do not play with it smartly. Yeah, you would like to add something? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. First of all, good evening and good morning, Arvind. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yes, Arvind is definitely right. But my uh, take on this, even before AI. even before ai the resume writing was a skill okay some other people used to write resume for many other candidates so there is always a probability of you know having a very strong resume but in the interview it they fail miserably because being a head hr i have taken you know almost uh, many interviews and uh, i can tell you the resume is never a guarantee that a candidate has all those skills first place because uh especially the people who are performing or who are actually good sometimes their resumes are not strong enough so even without ai the chances of them getting the interview call was always less because they are not putting the effort to make their resume look what they actually do so with ai without ai i would just say uh with ai or without ai it's always a matter of time and the filtering and the kind of prompt you will give in the ai like what are the words or what are the checklist you want to you know put across what kind of filters you want to put across so as arvin rightly said you have to be smart in using the ai but the probability of you know having best resume and not good quality in the interview will always exist that i cannot deny Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, that's a fact of life. So, that is something uh, the actual interview will, you know, always help to filter the cream layer. It all, it always happens. It always happens. I think uh, you are right, Sneha. But uh, also, Arvind. So, what is going to happen is with the ATS and other systems coming in with uh, resume screening. We have a lot of work or tools that which bring up. 
some part so i think if it is solves your 100% problem about 30% i think that should be the first step i think when we look at ai and as you gradually fine tune your configuration and how to look at that way it brings up uh, more clarity and your fine tuning of the ai tool becomes much more granular uh, seamless so that you get the accurate results that you want agreed uh, sneha arvin do you agree with that yes yes kumar yeah. absolutely <laughs> okay yeah. moving Thank on you, to the yeah i hope your uh, question is answered arvin yes it is answered uh moving on to the next question vijay yes so how can uh, hr leverage technology to streamline hr processes while maintaining a human touch sneha okay so uh since i'll take the example of uh, recruitment only Mm -hmm. since we are talking about the screening and you know uh, ats system so here yes automation or the ai will can simplify or uh, the filtering of the resume can save the time the onboarding where it is you know very routine job of uh, filling up the form or you know kind of uh, getting the information of the candidate all this thing can be automated but as a hr i would personally recommend hr to follow 30 60 90 formula with the new joinee he can be inducted by automation process but after 30 days after 60 days and after 90 days keep a feedback session one to one as uh, they had let me ask you i think uh, premise here yeah sorry got disconnected yeah so moving to the next question how can hr uh, ensure there's a sense of belonging connection among the remote and hybrid teams now being the norm of hybrid teams being uh, spoken all around and 70 hours somebody is talking about 70 hours somebody is talking about uh, number of hours how do we manage this this is becoming a critical thing for us to manage remote and hybrid team right how do we look at this very important question and i would say a very crucial task for current uh, hr department because you know especially post covid uh, remote working or hybrid working has become a norm initially it was not but today it has become a norm and it it is a challenge because when you see people day to day uh, in front of you it's a different connect but when you are uh, not you know out of sight all the more it becomes important to stay connected so very important i would say the communication communication connecting with the employee remote working or in office communicating the new policy communicating the new uh, achievement and recognizing employee and announcing it will help so even the remote employee will not feel left out okay like since i am not in office and that's why i am not being recognized no so hr has to you know or hr and the line manager of course together the team has to come out with the clear performance expectations so it doesn't matter if you are working from office or you are working from home these are the expectations from an employee and if those are fulfilled the recognition has to be announced it has to be public so that employee will feel 
yes no matter what if i am in office or not in office my work is still recognized so that is how the connection will always remain so when you say you will have to keep them engaged one is that second is you will have to keep them informed how this remote work yes. as a yes. policy has to be looked at uh, and how it has to be adhered and keeping them motivated in some form of connect is what you see as a uh, norm that is going to be part of the working uh, life for future right uh, yeah. absolutely absolutely so here the additional workload of hr is communication communication know yeah. where this break in communication should happen hmm. and recognizing the employee uh, for the work for the work and it is very important it's very important and recognizing and announcing it so that the person employee will feel connected okay okay yeah okay thank you sega mm -hmm. uh, i think shankar is uh, raising his hand i'm just mm -hmm. hi shankar uh, hi uh, thank you panelists it was a great uh, informative session i have a question based on this pandemic what we have learned uh, basically on leadership level and uh, what are the lessons learned primarily uh, understood by the industry and uh, moving forward if anything such this is going to happen again what is the contingency because during the covid many people went through a lot of hurdle and uh, uh, many people went through many things so i just want would like to know because i have another question but uh, let me just understand this first sneha would you like to take it yeah sure yes. so shankara thanks for asking this question so yes covid was uh, sudden and many leaders many in, i mean all leaders were unprepared that time so i will say a lot of decision might have gone wrong during covid you know uh, sacking the people cutting the salary and uh, taking some decision without having any kind of vision but post covid i am 100% sure the leaders have learned their lessons and they know now at least if this kind of situation will again happen the main important thing they are going to retain their people they are not going to sack them for sure because after the covid this financial contingency plan is already in place with lot of companies and any financial decision any kind of balance sheet preparation are being prepared keeping in mind such kind of situation if it arises initially it was not the case because that's what we do here initially we because no one was aware like something such things can happen but today we know the thing can happen and sometime you know like company wouldn't be in a position to pay the salary for a month but that doesn't mean company will immediately go and take a call that okay we sack the employee there would also be a collaboration with the employee and you know saying that okay we divide the salary so at least the job of all the employees are maintained so leadership has evolved and definitely post covid the leadership has taken lot of learning lessons from it that's what i would like to say okay thank you very much thank you to, to see from a technology standpoint we were not prepared to add what sneha said we were always in a point that will we be in a position to handle the load that we can do it from home are we ready prepared and stuff like that okay while we went into the pandemic but if you really look at we geared up there we had some things but tools okay. like zoom teams help us uh, get connected quickly vpns were yeah. anyway there with us where we used to come and connect uh, remotely from a technology standpoint and yeah. what happened is we went into a stronger system rather than saying that you will have to be present in office to work so that is one addition that happened during covid that is a big lesson for the leaders the leaders said how do we enable work whether you are in office or not if you look at taking the statistics that we did in uh, covid people have worked more time than the time they worked in offices 
there were calculations that happened where was there people said the travel time which used to commute in major cities like uh, predominantly bangalore was the example that was taken so one hour two hours of traffic up and down is three hours and we save that time people started looking at that as a, a way to work more they were available for meeting but the other flip side is there were many calls because as neha rightly said while we were in office i can walk in and say hey sneha or uh, shashank there is something that i want to do can you finish this and we walk out to our desk or get into another work but in the remote space what happens is you will have to call them he'll be in another call or she will be in another call by the time you they call you back you will be in another call that is one challenge that we see in remote work otherwise the technology and the systems and the security side is already briefed up taken into consideration considerable testings have been done for people to work from home the broadband connections have become stable okay and you see lot of people still insisting that they can work from home neha is that point what we can take it while we look at uh, remote working and uh, see how that we can uh, consider it sneha yes sure uh, prem kumar because uh, what shankara asks like what are the contingency plans so that time it was nothing but today after yes. the experience definitely we every every leader or every person has developed it and they have adapted to this new norm okay. so even if you know discussing with the colleague might take time but now mentally we are prepared that okay Correct. this is a norm yeah yeah so i hope uh, shankara your question is answered yeah yeah perfectly fine uh, in fact uh, i think ai is adding more value to the hiring process also at cizoot and uh, senior management roles uh, because i could see during the covid some of the people who were about to hire uh, certain candidates and uh, they put it on hold but though their business requirement was there and they were not ready to uh, really give a thought uh, towards going ahead with that that was during just at the cusp of uh, the end of uh, the uh, second lockdown so uh, that is why i was just very curious on this session and uh, it was very informative and thanks again uh, for everyone thanks neha if prem and sneha you added uh, it has to be a very good point and just i will say that uh, post covid i can see that willingness to work that has increased in the employee so even if a worse situation is happening uh, still nowadays employees mindset is no we have to work we have to keep continue uh, the momentum so that shift in the mindset will be helpful to overcome any upcoming challenges right 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 uh, yeah. yeah thank you thank you shashank thank you arvind vijay yeah yeah have yeah, another question sneha so uh, you have been talking about uh, work life balance and you know uh, because of that productivity gets affected so this question is about that only how does uh, prior- prioritizing mental health contribute to your healthier and more productive workforce uh vijay that's such a important question because uh not just for productivity but even for the mm-hmm. in general well being the mental health is very 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 important and believe me in india we have been ignoring this we are not uh, we were not that uh, careful and serious about such things but post covid when employees started coming back to the office and even with the hybrid model we could see you know there used to be a certain uh, drop in productivity or because in covid uh, i won't say majority but many employees have lost their relatives they lost their near and dear ones and the grief was not out because it was sudden and no one could do anything after they joined office the first thing what i did i started uh, counseling services for all the employees and their family it was one of the initiative which uh, as a head hr we took to ensure that they are mentally stable and healthy and they have a way to vent out or to you know discuss certain thing apart from office because always it is not you know uh, office workload or sometime it is also personal 
they have lost someone in the covid time the grief is always there and it need to be addressed and this service has really helped uh, my employees to you know uh, accept the loss of the dear one and come back and uh, start you know product be productive and at the same time to be more stable so many of them have started yoga taking care of their you know meditation and then of course they are having this regular counseling session with this counselor so this is these are certain uh, initiatives which we took and as i said mental health is very 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 important without mental health you cannot perform neither in office nor at your home or in any of your you know social life or other lifestyle yeah sneha i think you touched upon uh, mental health counseling and stuff when people came back to office uh next question how or what role does a hr play reducing stress you half answered the question but i want to put it across much better saying that reducing workspace stress and promoting positive work life balance how do we look at that when we see people coming back to office this would be our last question as we are nearing uh, and to close it sneha can answer then we will summarize so uh, as i have answered you know almost uh, this yeah. earlier like uh, counseling is one of the step right. to right. maintain this uh, balance and to reduce the workplace stress and i believe the workplace stress as well as there are certain other stress which a employee would be undergoing post covid okay so it's very important that he or she has some kind of help some kind of coach where he or she can you know discuss about how are they actually feeling what actions they can do to overcome such kind of thought process as a hr we can give this kind of services to the employee uh through the some third party or you know uh, having tie up with the uh, counselor mm-hmm. second regular performance review is very important okay because it's not just giving the services but are the services being effective mm-hmm. is it really helping the employee okay. so this uh, once in a year assessment is not something i would recommend i would recommend you know uh, timely review can be after every 3 months after every 4 months this will help and as i always say that money is not always the thing which keeps the employee in the organization but what help is you know making sure that uh, the fair wages and the benchmarking of the compensation is managed performance is managed properly and employee are free to take any kind of decision without being you know under the pressure so to have a balanced and stable life so this is how hr can you know help employee to reduce the work la- workplace stress okay so looking at what we hear from you here is we have to look at the way we do appraisals because the structure of uh, or taking a feedback from the employees not on yearly side that also should look at an agile methodology that you would like to suggest or in point if that is one way we can look at connect absolutely right. absolutely because see uh, waiting for a year to give the assessment hmm. see it is you know like post covid seriously life is uncertain we don't right. know what may happen tomorrow we don't know what may happen after one month so if someone has performed really good in the month of uh, april why do you want to reward that person in the month of december No. just do it just do it the person will you know perform me i mean five times more and seeing that person the other employee will get motivated and will start performing because they know they don't have to wait for that they okay. get the reward or you know the appreciation instantly and that will boost their productivity Yeah, so said. so you know in our organization we have come up with spot bonuses spot mm-hmm. bonuses the name the name itself says spot bonuses so there is nothing like you know it will be only given in march or only given in june no the moment we feel the some any employee has done something out of the scope or has done extraordinary work we just give it it's a spot bonus so you know employee also has that kind of thrill and uh, i would say willingness to perform and get that bonus Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Vijay. Uh, would like to add uh, closing statements, or do you want to give uh, input? 
thank you sneha for that uh, vijay Bye. yep thank you sneha for your uh, time and joining us and sharing your insights on the questions and uh, thank you so much uh, thank you arvind for your question thank you sankara for your question and thank you ashish for your question with this we would like to conclude the session uh, thank you audience for joining us today thank you prem uh, we'll come up with the next episode next week thank you so much thank you everyone thank you yeah, thank, thank you, you thank you vijay thank, thank you prem kumar thank you thank you have a great evening have a great evening thank you everyone